What's up guys? Recently I upgraded my VR set to the HP Reverb Pro. I had been on the fence for a few months and finally decided to pull the trigger. I want to be clear that I was not unhappy with the Rift S. As a matter of fact, the Rift S is a great VR headset when it comes to price and performance. Also, it's a great option for those looking to get into VR without spending a ton of money. But let's talk about the Reverb. This video is not an unboxing video nor an official review. Rather, this video will cover the highlights of the Reverb and my flying in DCS world. And I hope this video will help those with a Rift S or similar headset thinking about making the switch. So I'll cover my first impression with several bullet points. Setup and plug and play. Resolution and clarity. Performance in terms of frames per second. Visual smoothness and head tracking. Ergonomics and overall value and thoughts. Out of the box, the reverb is similar to the Rift S with a long and somewhat bulky cord ending with two connectors, DisplayPort and USB. You will need to have an updated version of Windows 10 as the reverb uses a program called Mixed Reality Portal which comes with Windows 10. You'll also need Steam with SteamVR. The actual program installation and hardware setup was quick, quicker than the initial Oculus setup if I recall correctly. But I found having to navigate and tweak extra settings for the reverb while the Rift S was more plug and play with minimal tweaking. In the end, the reverb uses two programs to get going, while the Rift S needs just one. Okay, the main attraction for the reverb is the increased resolution and clarity. It's virtually 4K and in my opinion is a significant and noticeable improvement over the Rift S. I had my Rift S dialed in with a pixel density of 1.7 and was happy with what it offered, but it had its limitations. And even with 2015 vision after LASIK surgery, I found myself straining my eyes at times reading labels in various airplane cockpits, spotting ground targets, and the carrier meatball. The reverb resolution is a major relief to my eyes. The cockpits are crisp and smooth, and the terrain looks noticeably alive. In my opinion, the gap between reality and virtual reality is much smaller with the reverb. The reverb has a maximum refresh rate of 90 Hz. You can also turn it down to 60 Hz if your computer cannot keep up with 90. My initial flight saw a solid and smooth 45 frames per second at low altitudes and 60 to 90 frames per second at higher altitudes. Other critical variables are if I'm single or multiplayer, the choice of map, and the number of clients and objects on the server. I'm still tweaking the in-game settings to find that sweet spot between frames per second and smoothness. I highly recommend using the VR shader mod and optimization video. Links are posted below. But let's be honest, no matter what supercomputer you have right now, VR gaming performance is not quite mature yet and still needs to be refined. Head tracking for the reverb is accomplished with only two cameras on the front end of the headset versus five cameras on the Rift S. I was a bit skeptical at first, but through my initial flights and dogfighting, which requires rapid head movements, the reverb's tracking seemed pretty accurate, but not quite as smooth as the Rift S. According to published numbers, the reverb and the Rift S weigh the same at 1.1 pounds. However, the reverb feels lighter on my face. Perhaps the weight distribution or the head straps provide a better balance with the reverb. Overall, I like the fit on my face and head. We all have different head sizes, shapes, and curves, so your mileage will vary. In closing, the Reverb Pro is an awesome VR headset providing true next-gen high-resolution gaming. In my opinion, the increased clarity is worth every penny. It may not be plug-and-play friendly as the Oculus Rift, but I can appreciate the big picture which is 4K VR gaming. On the other hand, having the ability to customize and refine your reverb settings may be your cup of tea. Other VR headsets require you to spend an additional $200 to $400 on Lighthouse head tracking towers that can easily put your VR purchase over $1,000, while the reverb has its own inside-out tracking hardware. As VR grows in the coming years, we will see more game developers improve their VR experiences. And I look forward to producing more gaming videos, not just in DCS World, but perhaps sim racing as well. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions about the reverb, let me know in the comments section below. See ya!